I rode behind it hundreds of times when I was a kid, and um, I took it for granted, and when it was gone, I just couldn't believe that, you know, it came back. It was just so exciting. Thousands of people come out to witness the homecoming of the Queen of Steam as the last Class J steam locomotive in existence thunders into the Star City this afternoon. Your first news starts now. It's 10 o'clock. Time for your first news. The Fox 2127 10 o'clock news. Good evening. Thanks for joining us live from the Virginia Museum of Transportation for this special edition of the Fox 2127 10 o'clock news. I'm Becky Freemall. Not like I need to tell any of you this, but it was an exciting day out here as the last Class J steam locomotive still in existence rolled in to the Star City after a year long restoration. Oh, you could hear her before you could see her. The thrill of everybody, there she is, where is it, where is it? And trying to see her around that corner, it was just amazing. I got into it because of my brother, but this was a pretty memorable experience. It was neat that they fit you up and that you're gonna be using it a little bit. I heard stories all my life from my dad while I was growing up. To finally see it, it was really cool. An afternoon filled with excitement and a lot of patience waiting for the Queen of Steam. It was real hard. <laughs> was it worth it? Yeah, it was worth it. Was absolutely worth it. The last Class J steam locomotive still in existence is finally home. Just it, the first sight of her, it was just a, a thrill of a lifetime, and I never thought I'd get to have it again, and I was so happy that I did. And I'm now joined with Scott Lindsay. He is the chief mechanical officer. You oversaw this renovation for the last year. That's correct. Spencer, North Carolina was home for the last year, so I'm sure it was bittersweet, but what was it like this morning to finally roll out and know that all that work was done? Today's the day. Well, it was a great moment getting 611 back out on the railroad, having been involved with it from 1982 to 1994. It's too good a locomotive to sit in captivity. <laughs> so it was uh, nice to see it leave, but at the same time sad to leave all our great friends at North Carolina Transportation Museum. Well, and I know that of course today, most of us saw it under steam for the first time, but you guys did a couple test runs. What was it like that first day when you saw that steam going and, and saw her moving down the track? That was a great uh, feeling of accomplishment for not only me, but the uh, other paid professionals and uh, the volunteer staff. A lot of hours went into uh, the seven day a week program that we put together, very little time off, but to meet the goal was uh, very rewarding. I kind of feel like this is the moment where you say, I'm going to Disney World now. <laughs> it's over, we won. Now we're going to Manassas, Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> That's not quite as exciting. Um, over the last year, were there ever any moments that you kind of thought, Oh man, are we going to get this done? Are we going to hit the deadline? No, no, it's project management and that's what I like to do. That's what I do and understand the locomotive and uh, understand how to run a project and put it together, getting the right resources and materials together at the right time to make it all happen. So uh, no, I, I always knew we could make uh, make the deadline. Well, you guys did a wonderful job. Well, thank she you very much. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely. Beautiful locomotive runs really well. Very good. Well, you know, we were just talking about this too. Generations of families have worked <clears throat> on this steam locomotive over the years. And of course, a very emotional day for a lot of people as they think about days gone by. We start with what is now known as the Virginia Museum of Transportation. On Memorial Day of 1963, a Civil War locomotive called the General rolled into what was then called Wasina Park Transportation Museum to celebrate the grand opening. Mayor Murray Stroller cut the ribbon and Norfolk and Western President Stuart Saunders made a speech calling the museum the fruition of a dream. The museum was far from finished and construction wouldn't be completed for years. The 611 was part of the Class J's third batch of production, assembled in 1950. It was built and designed by Norfolk and Western employees, costing just over $250,000. Today, that translates into two and a half million dollars. In 1958, Norfolk and Western retired 14 streamlined locomotives, the 611 included, replacing them with diesel engines. The 611 was then donated to the Virginia Museum of Transportation in 1960, where she sat for decades. 
Then in 1981, she saw her first renovation and returned to the tracks, named as a National Historic Mechanical Engineering Landmark. She was retired once again in 1994. Then in May of last year, the 611 made the trip down to Spencer, North Carolina for her second major restoration. Which of course brings us to today, the day that she thundered down the rails right here to the Star City. But first, before coming here to Roanoke, she made a stop in Lynchburg. What a, what a miracle, you know, what a super day. The queen of uh, Roanoke has come home. We'll take a look at the final leg of the journey home for the steam engine, as well as the people who got to ride this streamlined locomotive on this historical day. Stick around, we'll continue our live coverage right after the break. As the steam locomotive, the Class J611 made its way back here, to the Star City. It of course made a stop in Lynchburg and that is where it picked up some very lucky passengers. Our very own photojournalist Bruce Young was one of the lucky ones. Been chasing 611 up um, since about 8.15 this morning. I haven't seen so many rail fans in my life on the road. There she is. Every grade crossing has had someone out there waving, taking photos, smiling, and uh, you know, building the excitement for 611 coming back home. Been wonderful listening to her pull a full train, whistle blowing, working hard. I've had to pinch myself daily. Uh, this last month, once everything's gotten back on, the the jacketing starting looking like her old self again, getting the paint, then the test fire. It's been quite amazing to just, you know, am I actually doing this? That's the sound. Now, this is home rail for this locomotive. This is where it, it used to run. That, uh, I understand policies. I, I, I agree with them. It's fine. But best way to experience the steam engine is with the windows down so you can hear it, so you can feel it. Tear it apart, put it back together, and it, it's running good. It's uh, it's quite a quite satisfying. It was kind of nice being up there after spending a year working on it to get it ready to go to go to climb up there and be in the cab and do that. So it was fun. Uh, my name is Tom Garver. Fifty-eight years ago, I was assistant to O. Winston Link. Where do you think Winston Link would be right now? I think he'd be up in the tool car, maybe, with the door open, you know, so that he could get a little of the whiff of the coal smoke, and which he loved. The air would be blowing around and be kind of warm, and the, and the coal smoke, you get little puffs of it, uh, and it's wonderful to see the smoke again. I think it's going to be nice again. I think there might be a few bumps on the track, but if they maintain it, it will be well, they probably won't be. What a miracle. You know, what a super day. The queen of uh, Roanoke has come home. That's a great moment. It's nice to have her home. And of course, as you just heard, how important this is to so many people. A lot of time, a lot of hours, a lot of weekends went into getting this last Class J back on track. And to see her here in the Star City, absolutely incredible. But I can tell you this wasn't the only thing. Believe it or not, there are plenty of other things going on around the area. The Blue Ridge Music Festival kicked off today in Salem. And after the break, we'll take a look at some of the artists who took the stage and preview who will be grabbing the mic tomorrow. Plus, we'll have a look at weather and what you can expect if you want to head out to the festivities tomorrow. Stick around, our live coverage of the 611's return continues after the break. All right, now let's head back out to Becky Fremont, who is live at the Virginia Museum of Transportation for the 611's homecoming. Not a bad night out there, Becky. At least we've been dry for today. 
Oh, Alan, I, I don't know if it's you I have to thank, but yes, the weather is absolutely gorgeous for the return of the 611 this evening. It's wonderful. And as we've been saying throughout the newscast, this isn't the only thing. This isn't the only major event, I should say, taking place out here in Roanoke. All right, thousands of country music lovers are in Salem for the third annual Blue Ridge Music Festival. That's Jamie Lynn Spears on stage. She opened the festival this afternoon. This is the first day of the two day event and it's expected to draw more than 7,000 people each day from all over the state. Tonight, the headlining performances are Florida Georgia Line and Brad Paisley. And just down the road here in downtown Roanoke, the Taubman Museum held its annual sidewalk art show today. Artists from across the state set up on the sidewalks, of course, to display everything from paintings and photography to crafts and sculptures. Shoppers could also enjoy live music, a beer, as well as a wine garden. And we are having a great time out here. And even though it's pretty late at night, when I rolled in this way, there are a lot of people lining the fence still trying to get a glimpse of the 611 as she kind of relaxes this evening here at the Virginia Museum of Transportation. And of course, we'll have more as we go on throughout the newscast about today's events and those still to come. But first, a look at sports. And Alyssa, I believe we have some NCAA baseball ahead. Now I'll send it back out to Becky Fremall live at the Virginia Museum of Transportation. Becky, how's it going out there? Absolutely wonderful, Alyssa. As I was just saying, there are still rail fans out here kind of lining the fences trying to get a glimpse of the 611 as she sits here behind the Virginia Museum of Transportation. And I can tell you the folks out here wasted no time. They already broke ground this afternoon for the Preservation and Education Center. It will be the three track facility to house Norfolk and Southern's big three, as they call them, the Class J 611, the Class A 1218 and the Class Y 6A. Coming up on Monday, we will give you a look at what that facility will look like once it is actually built. All right, now stick around. Of course, the coverage of the 611 return is almost complete, but it is not the end of the weekend's festivities. We'll have the latest coming up. All right, now don't worry if you miss the activities today. There are plenty of things still to come tomorrow. In fact, right down here at the Virginia Museum of Transportation, they have the Celebrate Steam. That will be the look at the big three steam locomotives all in Roanoke, the first time in 60 years. Again, as we told you, the Class J611, the Class A1218, and the Class Y6A 2156. You can get inside the cab at the 611, talk to the restoration team, enjoy model displays as well as food, live music, as well as that from the Norfolk Southern Lawman Band. The event runs from 10 until 5. Tickets $25 each, 20 for museum members and children under the age of 12 are free. And starting in June, excursions on this historic 611 steam locomotive are available for purchase. You can buy your tickets soon because they are booking up fast. All right, that is our time for the special edition of the return of the 611 here to the Star City. Thanks for joining us. Have a great night.